So the vagina, just like any other part of the body, okay, has a lot of different tissues that can be able to give you cancer, okay? And one of those, okay, is the lining itself of the vagina, which is the commonest one that gives us cancer. And the cancer that it gives us, I don't want you to cram this, but is what we call squamous cell carcinoma. You have the glands that are responsible for secreting lubrication, okay, within the vagina during sexual activity. And this can also give you cancer. Hello, the modern family. Uh, it's me again, Dr. Teti, a practitioner at Modern Gyno Clinic located at, on along Moy Avenue. There's a big building there called Jubilee Building just next to Equity Bank. Uh, our clinic is located on first floor, okay? And in case uh, on the first floor of the right wing, when you come from the front uh, area and when you're coming from the back entrance is actually uh, towards the left, okay? And in case you have issues um, locating our clinic, then always there are guards at the entrance who would assist you uh, to be able to direct you to where the clinic is. I am an obstetrician, um, gynecologist. So meaning I deal with pregnant women, I deal with uh, other conditions of women. Uh, I also do keyhole surgeries, commonly called laparoscopic surgeries. Uh, and I am also a cancer specialist, okay? And so our clinic offers all these ranges of things, including family planning, cancer screening, care for pregnant mothers, and general gynecological conditions. Once again, Karibu Sana, our socials are open, they are all uh, uh, appear as Modern Gyno Clinic, okay, both on Facebook, on Instagram, and our contacts are there. All these you can use to be able to uh, reach us at any other given time. So in line with our series of um, uh, presentations, today we are going to look at what we call cancer of the vagina. I'll be commonly referring to it as vaginal cancer. Karibuni sana and walk with me, let us learn. I know uh, most of us have a rough idea, okay, uh, what the vagina is, okay. Um, lucky for us, okay, the vaginal cancers or cancer of the vagina is very rare, okay, very, very rare. In fact, um, in most of my practice, I think I have only seen either two or three of those, okay. And this is at Kenyatta National Hospital, which is one of the uh, biggest referral hospitals. Now, when we are looking at the vagina, I would like again to bring my photo, okay? Or rather my picture that I try using to describe all this. So you can see the vagina is this tubular structure, okay? Like a tube, okay? And it can expand. And this lies just between the cervix and what we call the vulva. If you look at our previous presentations, you're going to notice the vulva is the part outside where there is a penetrating area, okay? And between that and the cervix, this tubular structure is what we call uh, the vagina. So the vagina, just like any other part of the body, okay, has a lot of different tissues that can be able to give you cancer, okay? And one of those, okay, is the lining itself of the vagina, which is the commonest one that gives us cancer. And the cancer that it gives us, I don't want you to cram this, but is what we call squamous cell carcinoma. You have the glands that are responsible for secreting lubrication, okay, within the vagina during sexual activity and this can also give you cancer. You have other things. For example, you have muscles within the vagina. This can give you what we call sarcomas. You have the nerves, you have the blood vessels, you have the, uh, all those tissues can actually be able to give you uh, some form of cancer. This is for primary cancers of the vagina, but for secondary cancers, meaning cancers that are coming from somewhere and have spread to the vagina, these ones also can happen. And commonly is cancer of the cervix can spread to the vagina. Cancer of the vulva can spread to the vagina. Cancer of the uterus, okay? All those can be able actually to spread to the vagina. So as long as, as much as there are those cancers that start within the vagina, there are others also that uh, 
as, as a result of spread from the other areas of the body. So that is roughly uh, when we talk about vaginal cancer and how common it is, I've said it is very rare, actually less than 1%. The other question that I would want to tackle or rather the other thing that I would want to discuss is what are the causes of vaginal cancer? I might have mentioned this, okay, in our previous presentation. And one of the main causes of the vaginal cancer is human papilloma virus. Again, this is the same virus that causes cancer of the cervix, is the same virus that causes cancer of the vulva, is the same cancer that causes cancer of the anus, okay? It is the same one that causes some throat uh, cancers. And so it is one of the main offending things that causes vaginal cancer. Other things that can cause vaginal cancer include things like repeated trauma to the vagina, okay? Um, some people have very interesting sexual activities, okay? And so some of them might be having repeated traumas to the vagina and this can actually in the long term give you a uh, vaginal cancer. There are other things like long time ago, there is a drug we used to use when you're pregnant, okay, called DES, okay. This has actually been shown that in the long run, it can also give you vaginal cancer. And the other thing is radiotherapy. Again, just like we discussed in the valvular cancer, when you are undergoing radiotherapy for treatment for some other things, if the dosages are not well regulated, then there is a small risk of you getting uh, vaginal cancer. So mainly and the main thing is the HPV infection. And again, it is showing up here, but all those other things that I've mentioned can be a cause of uh, vaginal cancer. The other thing that I would want us to discuss is what are the signs and symptoms. Vagina and vulva usually the symptoms and signs are the same, okay? So you can have a wound there, what uh, medics we commonly call an ulcer. You can have something swelling within the vagina. You can have bleeding, and this bleeding might just be random bleeding, but commonly it presents as bleeding after sexual activity. So because of the trauma during sexual activity, because the penis is passing along that vagina wall, okay, it tends to injure that, the place with cancer and you tend to bleed. The other thing definitely will be pain. If you have cancer within the vagina and you're having sexual activity, there'll be a lot of pain, okay? And this pain can be during sexual activity or even not during sexual activity. The other thing that can be there is that you can have this discharge that is being treated, it has been treated, you have literally taken antifungals, come and jugu, okay? But nothing is happening. So it is high time that you come in so that you stop self-prescribing from the pharmacy. We have a look at the vagina and find out, is there anything developing from there? So roughly, those are the signs and the symptoms of the vagina, vaginal cancer. Again, I say there are many other things that can cause this. So the right thing to do is to come in, okay, and get examined by a medical practitioner, preferably a gynecologist, who will be able to pick up uh, this kind of a thing. This will bring us to another question. Then, yes, you have said if I have itchiness, if I'm having discharge, probably it is cancer of the vagina. How do we screen or how do we now make a diagnosis of that cancer? Again, my favorite quote, make your gynecologist your best friend. At least every year, come in. And because the vagina, we can be able to see it when we are doing our examination of that area, it is very easy to pick cancer of the vagina. Unlike cancer of the cervix, cancer of the endometrium, or cancer of the ovary, which are hidden up there. So just by coming to the clinic, by honoring your gynecological visits, at least annually, okay? But of course, if you have something going on that is abnormal, you don't wait for the annual visit. You can come in anytime. And just by examining you and asking you some questions, okay? We can be able to pick, and this is one of the effective methods when it comes to uh, vaginal cancer. The other thing that we use is what we call vaginal smears, okay? It's same as pap smear, but pap smear, we take them from the cervix commonly, okay? But for vagina, we use the same, same technique, the same things we use for pap smear, 
to pick the cells around there where we think something might be happening and this has actually also been proven to be quite good when it comes to screening of the cancers. And then for us to make a diagnosis, remember our previous explanation, screening is to identify those who probably are at risk. But for us to say that we, that you have a cancer, then it is paramount that tunachukua nyama hapo, again we take it to the doctors who are called pathologists, they analyze hiyo nyama and they bring us the result and tell us, okay, is this a cancer or this is no cancer? There is no cancer that is diagnosed rarely very few of them without having to take a piece of where you think the cancer is and taking it to the lab for analysis so this is roughly okay how we do screening and diagnosis of the cancer and he kuchukua nyama can actually be done in the office we do not need to go to theater okay some of them can be easily done in the office within five minutes and we are done there are few that we might go to theater but most of them okay we are able to just do them within our offices so feel free to come in for screening and in case of anything uh, if need for diagnosis is there all this can be done in fact in our unit at a one-stop shop so then it begs the question how do we prevent uh, vaginal cancer again i've said it borrows a lot of things from the vulva cancer we have said the main offending organism okay for vaginal cancer is actually hpv okay and so primary prevention is by taking our young girls okay 9 to 14 according to kenyan guidelines now to have the hpv shot okay and this has been shown to prevent all these cancers by over 99 percent just having that immunization of hpv and these vaccines have been tested we have no any data there is no research and again i challenge you to bring any research that says that that vaccine is bad this vaccine can sometimes be given to the boys although when we are looking at it in terms of public health benefit okay um really giving it to the boys as much as we can be able to give it to all the girls okay then it really adds no value but the boys can also be given because we know hpv it is transmitted probably by the male okay to the female and vice versa the hpv can also cause other cancers in men like penile cancer they can cause anal cancer in men so by giving the boys also we are protecting the boys from all this maybe it's some time uh, in the coming days, Kenyan uh, guidelines will change and in include our boys. Um, the other thing that we can do is now, in case you did not get the vaccine, okay, what can you do now in your adult life? Again, I've said HPV sexually transmitted, so healthy sexual behavior, okay, that means we need to probably. Uh, the ABC that we used to sing about, you need to condomize, okay? You need to be faithful. If that is not possible, any form of sexual transmitted infection should be treated, okay, at the right time. And anything that seems to be off within that area, you need to visit your doctor and get it sorted and not to ignore it. Another thing that we can do is healthy lifestyle. We are saying take balanced diet. We are saying reduce on alcoholism. We are saying reduce on smoking if you can do this or even stop completely because all these things have been shown to mess up your immunity and your ability to fight cancer cells and then the kicker is always whenever there's something visit your gynecologist because the vagina is just there we are very able to see whatever is going on just by examining you we should be able to pick those signs and do the necessary but in case there is nothing going on make it a routine that every year at least you uh, visit your gynecologist so that is basically on primary and secondary prevention of this cancer the other thing would be how do we treat okay yes i have vaginal cancer what are my treatment options now if you look at the way the vagina is located um surgery becomes a little bit tricky okay because remember we want to restore your sexual activity and where the vagina is located if you are to do surgery then it becomes tip, uh, tricky so yes we can do surgery okay 
we can even remove the whole vagina sometimes but sometimes we look at the quality of your life and so those are very extreme cases but we can do surgery number one okay and if you can do surgery then it has been shown to be the most uh, effective kind of treatment there are some chemotherapies that we can apply to some cancers okay so you are not injected this chemotherapy in your vein we just apply it okay on the cancer itself and some of them can actually be able to treat those cancers depending uh, on the stage and where we are the other thing is laser okay ablation with laser and this is the one that has been shown to be quite effective and also to improve your quality of life so we can do what we call laser ablation to these patients and of course the old radiotherapy okay which can even be given in the vagina so we do not need to radiate anywhere else we just put our pads within the vagina and we give radiotherapy locally within the vagina and the other thing that we can do is chemotherapy again the order of what comes first and what comes last it all depends on how you're presenting stage of the disease and even the type of cancer because there are other types of cancer which are not responsive to chemotherapy or their resistance to radiotherapy and only thing you can do is surgery so those are the treatment options that we have um what about the outcome it depends again okay with the type of cancer it depends with the stage of cancer okay whether you have some spread of the cancer from the vagina to other areas and it also depends with age so all those things we look at them and we are able to see what is coming in again sexual life is very important after vaginal cancer so we have said you have vaginal cancer what is the way forward in regards to 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 sexual life number one we can do serial dilatation of the vaginas after treatment so that we maintain the opening of the vagina and you are able to do your uh, sexual life we can do plastic surgery okay there are so many of those we can do other forms of sex in very extreme uh, uh, conditions and also psychological guidance just by itself can actually help improve your sexuality so these are all things that we can still do to allow you to have a normal sexual life healthy sexual life even after diagnosis of vaginal cancer um the other thing of course being in this field is what about fertility okay so again <clears throat> most of our patients are usually very elderly <clears throat> okay but that does not mean <clears throat> that younger patients don't seem to get those treatments and so fertility might be affected by the fact that once we do the surgeries or once we give you radiotherapy all those things can affect chemotherapy can affect your 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 fertility but the good thing is that the radiotherapy that we are giving right now we actually tend to tailor it in such a way that we target the specific area and so this is on very rare occasions that you might have this problem number two is because of the chemotherapy some of them can affect the ovaries and your ability to be able to get pregnant but again as we said before once you stop the chemotherapy then what happens is that uh, the ovaries usually go back and they are able to function normally so having said all that remember not every discharge is a cancer not every wound is vaginal cancer not every swelling in the vagina is a cancer there are other things that can give you this so these are things like the fibroids okay you can have fibroids within the vagina you can have what we call polyps within the vagina you can have infections even within the vagina you can actually have uh, a scratch okay just a small scratch there that makes a wound there so don't don't be in a panic mode just come in we'll have a look at it and we'll advise as possible things like cysts you can have pus actually some some infections can come with pus within the vagina so all these things can actually be part of what you might be undergoing and not necessarily cancer so the ticker here is if you notice anything okay within the vagina that is not normal then you need to come in we are open we will be waiting for you at any time karibu sana and thank you